maybe borrow Q's bicycle. And like, um, you're gonna find that it's faster even walking than riding a car. Just a little bit harder. Give me an F. Give me a U. Give me a C. Give me a K. Going up the country, baby, don't you want to go? Yes. The 1969 Wall Street Journal? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I might be able to find some of my old stocks in there. <laughs> Wednesday, January. Oh, God, it's our, it's our um, ad, probably, right? Um, Holy cow. I'm looking, I'm looking. Business opportunities. Well, so I need, gotta get my reading glasses. Oh. Capital wanted, here it is. Yep. Young man with unlimited capital, looking it? for it right down here. Right where I'm pointing. Oh my God, young man! You mean that story was true? <laughs> <laughs> Legitimate and interesting business, invis interesting investing opportunities and business propositions. <laughs> but the word "legitimate" just leaps out at you. <laughs> <laughs> we were writing a show for television about uh, two young guys with more money than brains, and the only thing we didn't have was plots. We couldn't figure out what kind of nutty business ventures these two young men would get into. In desperation, we took an ad out in the, in the Wall Street Journal claiming to be a young man with, quote, unlimited capital looking for business propositions, and they had better be legitimate business propositions because we didn't want any, <laughs> any con men to, to be writing it. Edible golf balls and uh, power sources from the eighth dimension. That was a good, that, that was a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, you liked it. No, we didn't invest in that one. We did actually invest in one uh, toward the end of the, uh, what was a torrent of psychotic ideas. Uh, there came a letter which we thought was actually a, an interesting business proposition in its own right. And we did something that, in retrospect, was probably the beginning of our careers. We stopped being an anonymous box number, and we contacted this, this fellow and, and began to investigate a business venture. Our first venture turned out to be, well, actually a year or two later, uh, the creation of a recording studio here in New York called Media Sound. And it was through Media Sound that we met Mike Lang and Artie Kornfeld. Michael had long hair and wore leather jackets with fringes and uh, bell bottoms. So when we first met, it was kind of like, you know, what are you? What are you? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that they were um, very straight, uh, suits, <laughs> basically. Nice guys, but, you know, mm -hmm. didn't have a clue as to what we were talking about mm -hmm. doing. And, uh, but I knew that they were sort of tickled by it. 
I was living in Woodstock and was thinking about doing a series of concerts in Woodstock. Eventually that sort of evolved over a course of months into a recording studio. What caught our eye in their proposal was that really at the bottom of it was two lines. And the lines were, Woodstock being the home of all of these artists, we think we could prevail on some of them to give kind of an opening day concert. Hey, if we could get Dylan out of his house and we could get a couple of other of those famous artists who lived up in Woodstock to appear at, at a catered cocktail party, why don't we get them to a concert we'll charge? Admission will uh, make a fortune. This is a, this is a real um, no-brainer. It was a no-brainer, but in another way. <laughs> laid this out for my father uh, that while I was doing this, that he, he had said, you've rented a field 100 miles from New York City, he said, and you're going to expect 50,000 people to come up there to listen to rock music, right? And you're going to put your own money into this venture. And I said, yeah, Dad, I am. I, I really think it's a great idea. I mean, there's a whole new thing going on in the world. Hey, man, this is the 60s. And he said something like, I just knew it. <laughs> I just knew it. I just knew that the minute you got your hands on your inheritance, you would do something like this. So we went back, and uh, we made a deal. The fact that we'd be gotten thrown out of Wallkill had thrown our plans into the wastebasket to try and explain to what by then was uh, 50, 60,000 people who'd already bought tickets that there was still going to be a festival and why we had moved it from one community to another, which was that we weren't welcome and we didn't want to throw uh, three days of peace and music where we weren't welcome. We were pretty stressed out. <laughs> it was on a Friday and we moved everything over the weekend. We went riding through Bethel, and through the back roads, and, and uh, came up over this hill, and there it was, an amazing bowl. And I said, stop the car, this is it. And we jumped out of the car, and we ran into the field, and, and uh, the agent said it belonged to, to Max Yasgur. It was part of Yasgur's farm. So we went over to Max's house and picked him up <coughs> and went back to the field. And Max, meanwhile, showed us some of his other properties. He had a lot of land in the area. And we cut a deal with him right there on the spot. Mm -hmm. I remember walking out into the middle of the field, and Max, and I said, well, what would you want for the field? And he said, well, I don't want to take advantage of you guys. And you know, I was like, <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> and started figuring out what his crop was going to cost and how much it was going to cost to reseed. And we uh, settled on a price and called everybody up and said, we're moving. Start to pack up Wallkill. And I think the next day, John came up and went to see Max. And so sort of we started to firm up the, the terms about 27 or 28 days before the show. Hold on. On the left hand side? Um, Michael jumped in with both feet and soon was running things like General Patton. You clear on all of them? You know, from the point of view of the production on the site, he's a, he's an, he was an impressive uh, guy. We worked feverishly for five rainy weeks to put this thing together, and about a week before, we realized we weren't going to make it. And we had a meeting, and we were told by our construction people that we could either have a stage for the performers or we could have fences, but we couldn't have both. If we don't have a stage, this is not good. Said, no, we can't not have a stage, for God's sake. And I said, well, if we don't have tickets collected, if we don't charge admission with what we know now, with, with having had to rebuild the entire site, we're going to lose millions of dollars. Well, and I don't have millions of dollars. <laughs> and so we, we, faced with this impossible choice, we decided to sleep on it. My father calls me up and says, your brother and I have decided to pay a visit to the site with you. To visit the site <laughs> would not be reassuring to the old man. Um, and so we drove up together <laughs> in what was 
a reasonably quiet ride, <laughs> as I recall. <laughs> and when we crested <laughs> the uh, top of Herd Road and we saw what looked like somewhat primitive preparations, maybe appropriate for an event that was going to take place over Christmas, <laughs> my father said something like, oh my god. <laughs> I said, oh my god. <laughs> my brother said, I didn't have a hand in this, Dad. <laughs> And I got out of the car, and um, I could look before me into the, what was to be our performance area, where we were to, in theory, admit people having collected their ticket or their money. And there, sitting there, were 50,000 people. This was Wednesday. <laughs> it was at that moment that a light went on <laughs> in my mind, and I said, we're not going to be collecting the tickets. By Friday, we realized that this show had grown from a projected 100,000 to maybe five times that number, with another million, we were told, on the way there. I had to come here because I know a lot of people are going to be here, and I'm planning to run into them. <laughs> I'm not really too interested in the people that are playing the music, you know, and I'm not really too interested in the people. It's just, uh, uh, I'm just here. You don't even have to bother to bring your tickets or anything because they aren't going to collect them. There's no way they can. <laughs> they got a fence that's like half up, and there are people just sitting in that field. It's really beautiful. Do you realize that half of these people don't have tickets? And there are people five miles away sitting on a highway with tickets right. who've driven two or three thousand miles. Right. Whatever has to be done to make it right, yeah. this is wrong. Yeah. So it's not for me to say how to do it. Right. There are ways to do it. I would never want to find out how to do it because I would never do one of these. <laughs> yeah, right. We're still waiting for the arrival of group one. Uh, please bear with us. Due to the traffic problems, we're going to have to start a little later. Stop being, stop being promoted, be a producer. We've got to, we've got to try to be a producer. What do you do with the people that are here? Take care of them. What's happening when this show starts at 1 o'clock? We're getting our show on in about five minutes. So if you just keep cool, relax, we'll be with you as soon as we can. Thank you. Maybe there'll be a few more people here by then. I don't like all this puny gathering like this. <laughs> it's a pre-concert from now on. That doesn't mean that anything goes. What that means is we're going to put the music up here for free. What it means is that the people who are put backing this thing, who put up the money for it, are going to take a bit of a bath, a big bath. We got a little bit late. We're here and they're here and something's gonna happen. And Richie was the one that was ready. So he was it. I get too low With no reason You say it's the moon Or maybe the season But something is not the same 
And I won't let my mind believe they did something wrong. I don't feel the same. I can't make it anymore. But I just can't lie When I feel this way There are things I must say I can't make it anymore I can't make it anymore Find out when Did it all begin Why I'm leaving you While love is through Can't make it anymore <laughs> I did about four and uh, five encores, you know, <laughs> till I had nothing else to sing, and then freedom was created right there on the stage. That's how freedom was created. On the stage was the last thing I could think of to sing. I made it up.
Start with the beautiful Richie Hayden. Give me an F. Yeah. Give me a U. Yeah. Give me a C. Yeah. Give me a K. Yeah. What's that spell? 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 Yeah. Well, come on, all of you big strong men, Uncle Sam, did you help again? Got himself in a terrible jam Way down yonder in Vietnam Put down your books and pick up a gun We're gonna have a whole lot of fun And it's one, two, three What are we fighting for? Don't ask me, I don't give a damn The next stop is Vietnam And it's five, six, seven Open up the pearly gates Well, there ain't no time to wonder why we are all gonna die Come on, Wall Street, don't be slow. I man, this is war, a go-go. There's plenty good money to be made. Supplying the army with the tools of the trade. Just don't be afraid if they drop the bomb, they drop it on the Viet Cong. And it's one, two, three. What are we fighting for? Don't ask me, I don't give a damn. The next stop is Vietnam. And it's five, six, seven. Open up the pearly gates. Well, Generals, let's move fast. Your big chance is here at last. Now you can go out and get those reds, cause the only good commie is one that's dead. You know that peace can only be one when the blown all the kingdom come. Sing it! One, two, three. People, I don't know how you expect to ever stop the war if you can't sing any better than that. There's about 300,000 of you fuckers out there. I want you to start singing. Come on. And it's one, two, three. What are we fighting for? Don't ask me, I don't give a damn. The next stop is Vietnam. And it's five, six, seven. Open up the pearly gates. Well, I ain't no time to wonder why. Come on, mothers throughout the land. Pack 
back your boys off to Vietnam. Come on, fathers, don't hesitate. And send your sons off before it's too late. Be the first one on your block. Have your boy come home in a box. All right. One, two, three. What are we fighting for? Don't ask me, I don't give a damn. The next stop is Vietnam. And it's five, six, seven. Open up the curly gates. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, Country Joe McDonald. Please welcome with us John Sebastian. Thank you. I don't know if you can really tell how amazing you look, but you're truly amazing. You're a whole city. I've been out in California and uh, I've been living in this tent. I had, a, I had the tent for about four days, and I met this lady that does tie-dyeing. So she taught me how to do it, and I got some sheets, and I put them up on the inside of my tent. And it's so groovy to come here and see all you people living in tents. Cloth house is all you need if you got love, I tell you. This is a this is a tune about uh, about rainbows, I guess. I've been waiting my time just to talk to you. Well, baby, I come to give you the news. I'll paint rainbows all over your blue. I heard you've been spending a lot of your time up in your room. And at night you've been watching side of the moon You don't talk to nobody If they don't come to you So babies I came up here To sing you a tune I give up Is all you really got to say Cause it's time to find our lifestyle Cause that really worked the way Let's go for a bounce on my trampoline I can show you the prettiest mountain That you've ever seen You better run to your closet and fish out your blue suede shoes I'll paint rainbows All over your blue You're all beautiful <laughs> Goodbye Ladies and gentlemen, the incredible string band. I swear you have the power, as the angels do. Spread out your fingers and make all things new. Change the world by the things you say. By the things you love and by the games you play. And you'll make new day Jennifer's heaven Virginia's day 
skin shining white as a dove lying beside her and melted away into a river of love. So gentle and wild Jennifer, something you handle with care Fragile as crystals of glass Jennifer's lips are as soft as the air Kissing her here in the grass Oh, I'm lost in a maze Counting the ways that she smiles And time is slipping away yeah. Lost in the arms of her love So gentle and wild Jennifer's heaven for Jenny, I'd stay Skin shining white as a dove Lying beside her, I melted away Into a river of love Into a river of love Into a river of love.
if I were a carpenter. You were a lady, but would you marry me anyway? Would you have my baby? If a tinker were my trade, would you still find me carrying the pots I made, following behind me? Say my love for loneliness, I say my love for sorrow. I've given you my onlyness Give me your tomorrow If I were much poorer, then you seem to see me. Would you be sure? I couldn't really be me. If I were a carpenter, you were a lady. Would you marry me? Would you marry me anyway? Would you have my baby?
the great Ravi Shankar. Gentleman who played through the rain, who just kept playing. Mr. Arlo Guthrie. Yeah, it's far out, man. I don't know if you, I don't know, uh, like how many of you can dig how many people there are, man. Like I was rapping to the fuzz, <laughs> right? Can you dig it? Man, there's supposed to be a million and a half people here by tonight. Can you dig that? New York State Thruway is closed, man. <laughs> a lot of freaks. <laughs> We're gonna do a Bobby Dylan tune, man. All right. Maybe you'll do it with us, you know. Maybe you won't. That's good. <laughs> I'm walking down the line. Walking down the line. You should sing that, but try it. I'm a walking down the line, walking down the line, walking down the line. Fear to be flying, to tell you about my troubled mind. That, you know, that's. Wait a second. That's not where it's at, man. I mean, like, there's a lot of people here, man. And obviously, you're not walking down a line. <laughs> I mean, you know. Hey, when he wrote it, man, he probably wasn't walking down a line. You know? But you should sing it, because sometimes, like, you might be walking down. I mean, like, if, you know, an earthquake hits California, man, and the, all, the, all the electricity goes and there's no more gasoline, You'll have to walk, you know, to wherever you're going. You might, you know, want to sing that song. <laughs> you might not. You might want to stay at home. But you could sing it staying at home too, man. We'll do it again. I'm a walking down the line. I'm a walking down the line. Walking down the line, feet will be flying to tell you about my troubled mind. Got a heavy headed gal, got a heavy headed gal. I got a heavy headed gal, ain't feeling too well. She gets better on the time to tell. I'm a walking down the line, walking down the line. About the trouble of mine. Seen the morning light. I seen the morning light. And it ain't because I'm an early riser. Oh, didn't get to sleep last night. I'm a walking down the line. Walking down the line. Walking down the line. Be the bed flying. I tell you about the trouble of mine. Got my walking shoes. I got my walking shoes. I got my walking shoes. I ain't a going to lose. I believe I got the walking blues. Cause I'm walking down the line. Walking down the line. Walking down the line. My feet have been flying. I tell you about my trouble of mine. My money comes and goes. My money comes and goes. Money comes and goes, rolls and flows, rolls and flows through the holes in the bottom of my clothes. I'm a walking down the line, walking down the line, I'm a walking down the line, free to be blind and tell you about my trouble mind. Thank you, man. Good night. There's nothing you can say except the fabulous lady. Let's welcome Joan Baez. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for hanging around. We thought maybe we'd have a sunrise concert, but maybe we won't quite make it to that.
like to sing you a song that is one of um, my husband David's favorite songs. And let me just tell you that he's fine. And Now we're fine too. And David was just shipped from the county jail, which is very much of a drag, to a federal prison, which is kind of like a big summer camp after you've been in county jail long enough. And they shackled his feet and they shackled his hands and they shaved his head and all that jazz. And, and he's perfectly good natured about the whole thing. The last time I saw David, he was smiling as usual, and we had waited a long time for the federal marshals to come to the house and pick him up, and as it turned out, they could have picked him up anywhere after the 10th of July, and they waited till the 16th, so probably any noise about David would have been buried in the moonshot. So anyhow, I was in touch with the federal marshal, and I said, you know, just let us know when you're coming and stuff, and I'll give you directions, because we really live way up in the hills. And they were too proud to take the directions, so they were two and a half hours late, and they, they pulled into the yard, and we had a big party going, and people with beads and hair, and really looking happy and having a good time. A lot of cameras, a lot of action, and these poor federal marshals didn't look very happy at all. And they said, as a matter of fact, they had gotten a little lost. And I thought to myself, I wonder if you know how lost you really are. But anyway. <laughs> they were just doing their job. So I saw them driving off down the wrong side of the road. And one of the girls who works with resistance had put a big old glow wiki resist the draft sticker on their bumper. And that's the last I saw. Hello to all friends of the draft resistance revolution in America. Good evening, I hope it stops raining. One thing about the draft resistance that's different from other movements and revolutions in this country and that we have no enemies. And it's one of the beautiful things about it. And to show that our hearts are in the right place, we'd sing a song for the governor of California, Ronald Reagan Zab. He's a drugstore truck driving man And he's a head of the Ku Klux Klan When summer comes rolling around We'll be lucky to get out of town He's been like a father to me He's like the only DJ you can hear after three And I'm an all-night singer in a country band if he don't like me, he don't understand. He's a drugstore truck driving man. He's the head of the Ku Klux Klan. When summer comes rolling around, we'll be lucky to get out of town. He's got him a house on the hill. And he can play country records till you've had your fill. He's a lawman's friend, he's an all-night DJ Sure don't think much like the records he plays He's a drugstore truck driving man He's the head of the Ku Klux Klan When summer comes rolling around We'll be lucky to get out of town He don't like resistance, I know and he said it last night on a big TV show. And he's got him a medal that he won in the war. Weighs 500 pounds and it sleeps by the door. He's a drugstore truck driving man. He's the head of the Ku Klux Klan. When summer comes rolling around, we'll be lucky to get out of town. We'll be lucky to get out of town. 
to sing you a song called Sweet Sir Galahad. It's the only song that I've ever written that I sing anywhere outside of the bathtub. Because I'm just smart enough to know that my writing is very mediocre. But anyhow, this is about my brother-in-law who has this very long hair and he married my sister Mimi after the death of her husband a few years back, Richard Ferrigno, whom some of you remember. <laughs> and the images conjured up in this funny little song are simply that I watched him come courting, and when he did, he used to come in the middle of the night through her bedroom window feet first. Sweet Sir Galahad came in through the window in the night when the moon was in the yard. Took her hand in his and shook the long hair from his neck and he told her she'd been working much too hard. It was true that ever since the day her crazy man had passed away to the land of poets pride she laughed and talked a lot with new people on the block but always at evening time she cried and he upon her face, a smile that could linger even stay. 